Hey everyone, this is Frank with Chess for Loden, and today I wanted to go over a very interesting game, um, and perhaps one of the most famous games to ever be played, um, and it is called A Night at the Opera, which is Paul Morphy versus two very strong uh, amateur chess players, um, which is uh, the Duke and Count Isouard. So we have Mr. Paul Morphy playing on the white end, and we have the Duke playing on the black side. So um, now for those of you that don't know why this game is called The Night of the Opera, um, this game was actually played during uh, the opera in the Opera House in Paris during Bellini's opera Norma. Um, so let's jump into it. So we have Mr. Paul Morphy starting off with the move E4. So E4 is your standard opening. It gives air to your bishop and queen along their adjacent diagonals. And we have um, the duke going in with the similar move E5 with the same idea of giving your bishop and queen air. Um, after that, we have Mr. Morphy jumping in with knight to F3. Um, and we have the Duke coming in with the move d6. Now, this move is called the Philidor defense. Uh, this was named after Francois Philidor. Um, it's a solid opening, but slightly passive, and it ignores the most important d4 square. Um, so in this position, most modern players will play uh, knight to c6 and uh, knight f6, which is known as the Petrov defense. So let's jump back into this. Now, after that move, we have Paul Morphy going in with a very aggressive move. He wants to open up the center. He saw that this was not really a great move. Um, he wanted to uh, shed light on why this wasn't a great move. So after we have this D4 move, we have the Duke following up with Bishop to G4. Um, so Bishop g4, um, it's considered an inferior move today, um, but this was accepted theory at the time. It was known as a very popular move during this time. Um, so uh, let's see what, um, what Mr. Paul Morphy follows up with. So we have uh, d takes e followed by a recapture of the knight. So. Now we have Mr. Morphy jumping in with Queen captures the bishop. And uh, what do you think the Duke does on this next move? I'm going to throw a little, uh, a little quiz your way. So you can go ahead and pause the video and try to see what he does next. All right, so after this move, we do have uh, D takes E5 in this position. So D takes E5, opening up the center, and um, this is where the attack really starts from Paul Morphy. Um, after this move, we have a very good, most powerful move with a mate threat on board with Bishop to C4. So after Bishop C4, uh, the chess amateurs do really start to feel the pressure of Paul Morphy's pieces. They're all directed towards the king side, staring at the weak f7 pawn. And uh, the duke has to respond to this. You can't, you can't not respond to this made threat. So he follows up with knight to f6. Now Paul Morphy sees this move as a bit passive and wants to continue to put pressure on this move. So again, I'm going to throw another little quiz your way. What would you play here? So we have Mr. Morphy playing a, another very powerful move, queen to b3. So queen b3 is now staring again with another made threat of bishop takes f7. And no matter where the king goes, queen to uh, queen e6 is checkmate. So Again, the Duke has to be very weary of what's going on here. So he has to protect. And not only that, we have an additional pressure put 
on the sensitive b7 square that no longer has that light square bishop to watch over it since uh, since the duke decided to take uh, Morphy's knight on that f3 square. So the duke answers back with queen e7. Now queen e7, you have your first lady in a, in a defensive mode. So as you see, um, the duke is curling up into a ball just to prevent checkmate. And this is happening over and over. And, and Paul Morphy um, sees this as a huge advantage. So now in today's world, you would see a lot of younger players, a lot of even stronger players who would go in for the move um, queen takes on b7, um, following up by saying, how are you going to protect your rook in this position? But Paul Morphy doesn't want any of that. Paul Morphy wants his throat. He wants to win this game, and he wants to checkmate. So his next move is uh, knight to c3. So knight c3 has a lot of options added to it. Um, he definitely wants to... Uh, he definitely wants to to show that I am better positioned in this in this game. This game is not leaning your way at all. I am better developed. I have more pieces attacking your king. You're in a passive position right now. Um, so there. This this is considered so in this position, taking on b b7 is it, it's a butcher's move. So obviously Paul. Paul Morphy was not a butcher. He was an artist. He, he wanted to show that. He had a passion for this, and he was going to show that. So the Duke follows up with the move to uh, c6. So c6 is lending support to that b7 uh, um, pawn with the queen now. So now everything seems to be protected. But Paul Morphy continues putting on pressure in this position and keeps saying, what are you going to do? How are you going to untangle? How are you going to get your bishop in the game? How are you going to get your knight in the game? Um, you know, you took away a, a, a good square for your knight by playing that c6 move. So Paul Morphy adds more pressure by going bishop to g5. Bishop g5 is now x-raying the duke's queen that is on e7. Um saying, how are you ever going to get untangled now? You can't move your knight. You can't move your bishop. You're not, your rooks are in the corners. You can't really do anything good with your knight on the, uh, on the b8 square. So what are you going to do? So it's just question after question after question. So now we have Paul Morphy, who plays um, just a stunning move. So this is, uh, this is almost a zigzag move right here. Um, you can't really do anything without almost dropping a piece, a pawn. So uh, we have kind of a lashing out move. Um, so b5 is played. Now, most people would think, well, what do I do with my bishop? Do I drop back? Do I go to, do I go to d3? Do I go to e2? Do I go back home to f1? Um, Paul Morphy says, none of the above. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take your pawn with my knight. And now I'm going to open up a very, very strong attack against your king. Um, next move, the duke says, show me. I want to see how you're going to do this. So he takes the knight. After he takes the knight, Paul Morphy takes back with his bishop and puts the duke in check. So how do you untangle from here? What do you do? Do you move the king and expose yourself to a castle with check? Um, you can't move the queen. Um, obviously, you don't want to block with the queen and, and drop your first lady. So the duke plays the only move that seems necessary in this. He thinks it's, it's, it's a good move. So he blocks the knight, going knight to d7. So in this position, how would you win this game? What would you play? What seems the best to you? Um, so we have either short castle, long castle, bishop takes knight, taking advantage of the pin. Um, what would you take? Uh, what would you take with the G bishop? So uh, if you want to pause the video and take a look at what would you do in this position, 
and try to play like Mr. Morphy, what would you do? All right, so Paul Morphy in this position plays Longcastle. Longcastle adding more pressure to that knight on d7. He says, ha, you can't take with your other knight because your other knight is pinned to your queen. Um, your knight on d7 is pinned to your king. Your bishop on f8 can't move. And your rook on h8 is just a, it's a big dummy over there. You know, he's only has one other legal square to go to. Um, so what do you do? How do you untangle in this position? How do you do the right thing? So um, the next move, and probably the only good move in the position um, the Duke plays, is Rook to D8. So Rook to D8 is lending support to the pinned knight, knowing that the other knight is also pinned to the queen. So we have a royal pin here. Um, you can't really do anything here. This is completely Zug's way. How do you untangle even further from here? What, what can you do? So... On this next um, set of moves, um, this game doesn't go on much longer from here. This game is very close to being over, and the Duke feels the pressure. Um, the pressure is just getting stronger and stronger. So these uh, these next moves are very, very powerful for Mr. Morphy. Uh, so next we have Rook D takes D7, followed by Rook D takes D7. And now we have just so many pinned pieces in the position. Um, so instead of having a knight pinned to a knight, now we have a knight pinned to the queen, and we have the rook pinned to the king. So what do you do in this position? Well, Morphy plays rook to d1, adding more pressure, saying you're still in a bad position. Your rook is still stuck on h8. Your bishop still can't get out. This game is just one-sided. How do you ever figure out a way to untangle in this? And me personally, I think the best way out of this position is just to resign. It's probably your only way to get out of this position. So after this, we have, um, we have a series of moves that just are very, very powerful. Um, so we have queen e6 finally breaking the pin, bringing the bishop on f8, saying I need to get out of this position, and I need to get out of it now. But unfortunately it's a little too late, because um, this is where the knockout blow happens. So after this, we have, uh, we have just a stunning, stunning few moves that just lead to the end of the game. So after this, we have bishop takes on d7. Um, now that the knight is finally freed, he can now take that piece and knight takes. So, do you see the checkmate in this position yet? And if you do, pause the video and let me know how you would get checkmate. Alright, so this is where Paul Morphy shows that he's an artist, he's not a butcher. From this position, we have a beautiful sacrifice of queen to b8. Queen b8, and there's only one legal move in this position. You can't move the king because the king is being cut off by the bishop, that very powerful bishop on g5. And uh, your only legal move here is to take with the knight. And after knight takes, we have a stunning checkmate with rook to d8. Check and mate. So this just goes to show how great of a player Paul Morphy was. Um, on the Duke side, we have a queen and a knight extra, and they do nothing in this position because it's checkmate. But yeah, this was uh, this this is one of those games where it's just it goes to show if you know how to play it correctly, you will win the game. So I hope you enjoyed this game as much as I do. I, I really love every part of this game. Paul Morphy was just, he really showed how much of an artist he was in this game. Um, did not allow the Duke to ever untangle. Never allowed any counterplay. And um, the Duke just had to react to every one of Morphy's threats. And unfortunately, 
it ended, well, actually, I should say fortunately ended this way because this game is just an absolute beautiful masterpiece. But um, again, I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, I'm going to be coming out with more of these videos. Um, I I'm no master, I'm not a title player, but I do enjoy going over these games because it's part of my study. So I, I'd rather not study alone and have more people learn with me. Um, so thank you guys very much and uh, hope you guys have a great night. Bye.